Hello everybody and welcome back to Sky Saga Alpha 9. We're over here on Tutorial Island and it's time for more Lumo Stone work. So today we're going to be talking about this little thing that I am standing on top of. Now it does look a little bit complicated but don't worry we will get into how it's all built in a very short amount of time here. So if I turn around what we're actually looking at here is a counter. Now this is going to count up. Every time I step on the plate it is going to count up. Now at the moment I've only got a 2-bit counter. This counter is going to be done in binary. So for those of you who don't know binary, binary is essentially like uh, counting in base 10 which is what everybody in the normal world counts in except for you're counting in base 2. So unlike in counting in base 10 where you count 0 to 9 and then you move up into the next digit so you have a 1 and a 0 which makes 10 this time we're doing that but with 2's so each individual uh, index is only going to be 0 which is a light turned off or 1 which is a light turned on now this first light down the bottom here indicates 0 or 1 the next light up here indicates 0 or 2 Two. So as we add more on, you go the 1s category, the 2s category, the 4s category, and the 8s category. Now, binary is uh, a thing that's been around for a very long time, so I'm not going to get too much into binary. If you haven't seen any binary stuff before, I would suggest having a look at, you know, even just the Wikipedia page, getting yourself a little bit more familiar with how binary works, because uh, that is going to be something that we're going to talk about a fair amount over the next couple of tutorials. So here we go, we've got a very small 2-bit binary counter here. Now, what happens is when I press step on this pressure plate, you see we went from 0, which is nothing on, to 1, which is this guy on and that guy off. Now, if I step on this plate again, 1 is going to transition back to 0, and this guy over here, because that means 2, is going to turn on. So we're going to turn on 2, just like that. Bam! So now the counter is sitting at 2. Now, if I step on the pressure plate again, we're going for 3, and 3 is 2 plus 1. So we'll see this guy turn on as well. Now, Here's the weird bit about counters, and especially binary counters, and especially counters made out of logic gates. When you hit the maximum number, which in this case for us is 3, because there is no extra light, we can't display a 4. When you hit the maximum number and step back on that pressure plate, it rolls over and starts itself back down at 0. So we're now back at 0, we can step back on and we go to 1, step back on again, we go to 2, step back on for a third time and we go to 3. But when we hit 4, we jump back down to the start. So here you go. That is exactly how a counter works. Now, these counters I have designed to be modular, so you can just keep stacking these things up and end up with as many uh, binary bits as you absolutely want. And these things get big really, really, really quickly. When you add eight binary counters together, you can count all the way up to the number 255. And then if you add further, you can keep counting and keep counting and keep counting. And you can get very, very big numbers out of this. Obviously, I've just built two because it is a very, uh, just a simple little circuit to show off how this stuff is done. So if we actually step back and have a quick look at this circuit, uh, this is the main body of the circuit over here, and then this is just a, a little safety feature that I've added, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Now, as I said, this does look very complicated, but it's actually made out of things that you've seen before. Uh, so this guy here, which is our input, is just a rising edge pulse, which we've built before, and also we did the update video on previously. So that's what that is. Then this... A uh, bunch of four here is just the flip-flop that we built in a previous tutorial. Then we're coming over here. This guy here is just the uh, falling edge pulse, which once again, we've done in a previous tutorial and we updated uh, yesterday with the update video. And then finally over here, we just have another flip-flop uh, setup. So as you can see, this thing is highly, highly modular and you just kind of keep connecting these things together. If I wanted to build another one, all I would need to do is build another falling edge circuit and another flip-flop circuit and add that over here and we could uh, add another light into this and we could count up to four, but except for we'd be able to count all the way up to seven because we'd be able to count four plus two plus one, which is seven, and that would be the full thing. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to place one of these down with you here on camera. So what you're going to need, and this is all of the stuff that you need for a 4-bit counter. So this is our, our little setup for our 4-bit counter. Now, 
what I've got here, you need four of, like this is the uh, the latch the latch and flip flop circuit. So you need four of these. This is the rising edge, uh, sorry, falling edge circuit. So you need three of these because you don't need one for the first circuit, but you do need a pair there and then you need a pair there and then another pair. So for each uh, new flip flop you add in after the first one, you need this uh, falling edge pulse setup. So here we go. And then you only need two rising edge pulses because there's a rising edge pulse here and there's a rising edge pulse over there. But we're going to talk about that in just a second after we've actually built the rest of this system. Um, and then of course you're going to need enough output lights uh, for the system you're building. So like I said, we're going to be building a four light system and then you're also going to need a pressure plate to actually activate this thing. So let us go over here and we'll start by placing down our pressure plates. I'm actually going to build starting here and we're going to build this way across and we're going to build a four count system. So obviously the start of this is pretty simple. We're going to place down our pressure plates, place down just like that. And we're going to feed the pressure plate into a rising edge. Now we've done rising edges before, but just in case you're unaware, uh, we have one not gate like that and we have an end gate like this. And then we connect all of these things together by going pressure plate into the not gate, not gates into the and gate at the A side and pressure plate into the B side as well. So there we go. Now that is our rising edge pulse. So this rising edge pulse gets fed out into the flip-flop circuit. Now the flip-flop circuit is uh, pretty simple. We've done one of these before as well. We need a latch, we need two end gates, and we need a single knot gate. So let's put our latch up the front here, just like that. Now we need two end gates, one on either side, and we need a knot gate. Now I'm going to actually put the knot gate over here just to be a little bit different. Now what we're going to do is we're going to link the and here to the B side of this and and also to the B side of this and just like that. Now we can hook up the actual latch itself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the output of the latch and hook it up to the A side over here. And we're going to take the output of the latch and we're going to hook it up to the not gate over there and then we're going to whoop, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm going to take the output of this knot gate and hook it up to the A side of this AND gate, just like that. Now we've got all of that stuff set up. What we're going to need to do is hook the one with the knot gates, this guy over here. We want to hook that end gate up to the ON of the latch and this guy up to the OFF of the latch. So we go. This is our latch system that we've seen before. This is just going to turn our one Lumo Stone light on and off, pretty much the same way we did this before with the door. So if we click this onto here and step on this pressure plate, oh, that was a big jump. There we go. On, off, just like that, as we've seen before. Now to move on and uh, join the next piece onto this, we actually now need to go through and build a falling edge. Now, falling edges are really, really simple. A falling edge is very, very simple. It is just two knot gates. And actually, I'm going to pick those up and place them back down so they actually look the right way around to me. So here we go. One there and one there. Now, to hook this guy up, we need to take the output of this latch and feed it into this knot gate. And we take the output of the latch and we feed it into the other knot gate and then feed one knot gate into the other, just like that. So there we go. This is now our falling edge, and this is going to feed into the next latch down the line. So I'm going to do this next latch really, really quickly because you've already seen me do one of these on camera. So we're just going to very, very quickly, I'm going to throw my latch there and my end gates here and here. I might actually even start running out of space. I think we have uh, I've misplaced these, so we'll just quickly pick those back up and bring them back into line with everything else. Obviously, you can make your outputs wherever you like them. I'm just going to put them in front of the latches for the time being, just to make this look uh, nice and neat for you so you can actually understand where things are going and where signals are coming from and where signals are going to. So once again, this is exactly the same, hooked up exactly the same way. So we've got the output goes to the B side of both AND gates, one and two. The output of this guy goes to the 
A side there. The output of this guy is going to go to the off. Output of this guy is going to go to the on. And then we're going to feed this guy back into the A side here and the not gate back here. Just like that. So here we go. Beautiful. Now, for some reason that has turned on. Now, I am pretty sure that is because when these things fire up, this uh, little gate here actually does trigger them to start with. And there's a, there's a little quick little trick that we can do to fix those up. But anyway, this guy is now actually starting to come together. If we stand back on this pressure plate, uh, there we go. So one, two, three, just like that. Now this is exactly the same as what we have over here, but of course, as I said before, we can keep extending this. So that's what we're going to do. I am now going to put another falling edge down and we're going to keep going with this. We're going to keep extending it because why not? We can keep going, so we might as well. So here we go. We're going to put down another falling edge and I've misplaced this once again. Put down our, our next falling edge, just like that and like that. And hook these up as we did the last falling edge. So the output of the latch into both knot gates and one knot gate uh, like this one fed into the other like that. Beautiful. So now we have this set up. Now, as you can see, this light has turned back on. That's because these uh, falling edge circuits do trigger on their own every now and again. And it's normally when you place down fresh Lumo lines or when the world gets generated. And that's actually what we had the other little piece of circuit for. But we'll talk about that in just a second. So what I want to do now is I'm going to build the last couple of latches off camera because they're literally just the same thing we've been doing. Copy it again and copy it again. And then we'll come back and talk about finishing this thing up so you have a full set counter and we're going to have a four bit counter this time. So here we go. I have now finished lining all of these gates up and they are just done exactly the same way that you saw me do on camera. So we have one flip-flop circuit going into one falling edge circuit going into a flip-flop circuit going into a falling edge circuit going into a flip-flop and it just keeps going down. Obviously you could keep extending this if you really wanted to. You could just keep adding more um, pulse circuits. Uh, yes, falling edge pulse circuits and flip-flop circuits all the way on down. Now the only problem, as you can see right here, these guys are currently all just on. And that is going to happen because these falling edge circuits trigger every single time something is done to the circuit. Whether that be modifying the circuit or when the island itself loads in. All of these falling edge pulses trigger. So I'm just going to quickly clear this by adding an extra two counts to this. And you'll see that all clears back down nicely. But now if I just quickly click over to here and click back off again, you see that that update caused these three to update and turn on, which is not the behavior that we want at all. Uh, so we're going to quickly just drop these guys off again. And the last thing we actually need is this guy up here. So we need one more rising edge pulse, but this time we're going to be setting it up with a Lumo Stone knot gate. Now this means that when the island gets spawned in for the first time, you're going to have the falling edges pulse very quickly because that is what they do. They set off a really, really quick pulse. And then microseconds after that, you're going to have the rising edge pulse triggered off the knot gate, pulse through and turn these guys back off for you. So the way we do this is pretty simple. We just grab the end gate and the knot gate. So I'm just going to put these down over here. Once again, this is just a rising edge circuit. We've done these before. Actually, going to move that guy in just a second. Here we go. Going to move him just to here, so it's a little bit clearer what I'm doing. And then we're also going to put down a knot gate at the back. Now, the knot gate is the thing that we're going to do uh, to hook everything up. So this guy starts and goes into that knot gate. This knot gate goes into the B side down here, and then finally this guy goes across into the A side, just like that. Now. This guy gets sorted out by jumping out across into the off section of every Lumo Stone gate other than the first one. The first one doesn't need it, so we don't actually need to put it into the first one. It's just a measure against these rising edge pulses that we've been sorting out. So here we go. Push this guy through into here. Push this guy through into here as well. And as you can see, that is having the desired effect because now every time we trigger an update to the circuit, it is updating not only these 
uh, falling edges, but it is also half a second later updating this rising edge as well, and it's meaning that these guys stay off because they get kind of a double trigger at the same time to turn on and turn off, so they just stay exactly as they are. So here you go, that is now the completed circuit. There's only one other thing that we can do to make this circuit a little bit more usable, and that is throwing down another pressure plate. This pressure plate here is going to be our reset pin. So I'm going to actually set our reset pin all the way down over here so that it's off the, uh, the main pad and so that it is a little bit out of the way. And to use this, all we're going to do is we're going to hook it up directly to the off pin of every single latch that we've got here and directly to the latch don't uh, hook it into the flip-flop hook it directly into the latch in every single off pin and that way when you stand on this thing it is going to send an off trigger down to every single one of these latches and reset the entire thing back to the zero point which is exactly what we want it to do so here we go we're going to throw it down over to here just like that now we've got that all hooked up so now if we do a bit of a quick test Perfect timing for the sun to go down so we can see all of the lights happening. Here we go. We've got one light turning on over there. That's a one. That's a two. That's a three. And that's number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. All the way over there. As you can see, it takes a small amount of time to get over there. There is a slight propagation delay that happens in this guy, but that's okay. It does all work out in the end. So we're going to go up to 9 and then up to 10 which is of course 8 plus 2. Now we're going to come down over here and we're going to step on this pressure plate and reset everything. Beautiful! So there you go, now we are back to zero and we can start counting from number 1 again. So if we jump down here, start counting from number 1, perfect! Number 2, number 3. So here you go, that is it for today's episode. Obviously this is all counting in binary right now, so in the next episode we're either going to talk about a timing circuit to get this thing to count automatically, or we're going to talk about a way of counting in decimal numbers. Now it's going to be up to you guys, leave me a comment down below which one you'd like to see first. Uh, because, of course, I will go through and do both of them, but you guys get to choose which one you see first. So you've got a choice of counting on a timer or counting in decimal numbers, so everything is a bit easier and nicer to read. Either way, both of these things are going to end up with a final tutorial, or not a final tutorial, but a huge tutorial making a race timer for an island based on everything we've been doing and the next two tutorials as well. So I hope you guys are excited. I am excited to get these ones out. Hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next episode.